crowds had gathered to watch the arrivals for the opening of Jamaica's independence legislature. The Premier, the Honorable Sir Alexander Bustamante, led the members of his Jamaica Labour Party. Their supporters cheered them all the way from the Duke Street headquarters to Gordon House. There was cheering, too, for the Honorable Norman Manley and the representatives of the People's National Party, the official opposition in the new legislature. As the members entered the House, the crowds awaited the arrival of His Excellency the Governor, Sir Kenneth Blackburn. The Guard of Honor was mounted by the 1st Battalion of the West India Regiment. Attending the Governor during the inspection were his ADC, Lieutenant Carr, Brigadier Lister and Lieutenant Colonel David Smith. The regimental band provided the music. It was an occasion of pomp and ceremony which underlined the great importance of the coming session and the heavy responsibility which rests on government and opposition members alike. When the inspection was over, Sir Kenneth Blackburn entered Gordon House. Inside the chamber, members of the council were present as he made his way to the dais, followed by the clerk of the legislature. The time-hallowed ritual of democratic parliamentary government was faithfully observed, as His Excellency bowed to the council and the Lord Bishop before requesting the attendance of the elected members of the House of Representatives. Sir Alexander Bustamante led in the government supporters. On them falls the biggest share of responsibility for steering Jamaica into independence and guiding the destiny of the people who have chosen them for the test. Mr. Norman Manley and his supporters then moved to their places in the chamber. Though in opposition, they share no less the burden of deciding wisely for the future. Prayers were said by the Lord Bishop, the Right Reverend Percival Gibson. Prayers for God's guidance and blessing on the work of the new legislature. The ceremony was relayed by public address system to the waiting crowds outside. In a few short months, the decisions taken in this chamber will be sovereign within the island. There can be no interference except by treason or act of war. As tradition demanded, the speech from the throne outlined the government's policy for the new session. His Excellency concluded with these words. The greatest need in the Jamaica of 1962 is surely confidence. Confidence by all Jamaicans in their ability to cope with their many problems and so to take a full place in the world as an independent nation. And confidence in Jamaica by those outside whose help we need. The first will beget the second. We know that we have in this new legislature today a body of men and women devoted to their country and capable of rendering great service to it. But we have to prove this to those outside. I am confident that you will do so. It is then in a spirit of great personal pride in Jamaica's achievements and in a spirit of complete confidence for the future that I now have the honor to declare this session open. May the blessing of Almighty God rest 
upon your country. The opening ceremony was over. The elected members prepared themselves for the work to come. Destiny had called them to the task at a time more important than any other in Jamaica's history. They represented a people united in purpose, united by a sure faith in the future of their country. Jamaica is on the threshold of independence. Soon she will emerge an independent nation after 307 years of British rule. to bring home to every man, woman, and child in the island the meaning of this most significant step in her history, preparations move into high gear in every city, town, and village. The campaign to clean up, paint up, and decorate is well underway. Midnight approaches. 30,000 Jamaicans and their distinguished guests, including Princess Margaret and Vice President Lyndon Johnson, assemble in the National Stadium. They are privileged to participate in the main ceremony heralding Jamaica's independence, an event which comes but once in the history of a people. At three minutes to midnight, the flag of Jamaica is borne into the arena by runners of the Boys' Brigade and received by the Prime Minister, who hands it to a warrant officer of the Jamaica Defense Force. His Excellency the Governor and the Prime Minister take up their positions facing the Royal Box. flag which has flown over Jamaica for the past three centuries is about to be replaced by the Jamaica national flag heralding the birth of the new nation. The lights go out. The Union Jack is lowered and the new flag of Jamaica raised. all Jamaica bursts into celebration. From one end of the island to the other, the sky is ablaze with a bursting of fireworks. 
Their riot of colors and diversity of sound transform Jamaica into a veritable fairy. Later in the morning, flag raising ceremonies are taking place at schools all over the country so that the children can have an opportunity to witness the birth of their new nation. children are given independent souvenirs and treats to mark the occasion. And here's to independence. The youth of Jamaica is confident in the future of their country. Led by the Prime Minister and the Princess, Jamaica goes wild with excitement. In a thousand towns and villages all over the country, entertainments have been organized for the people to celebrate the great occasion. The events in which they take part reflect their way of life. Dancing in the streets, where there are no barriers, open and free to all. Independence comes as both an opportunity and a challenge. An opportunity to all Jamaicans to build, by their hard work and sacrifice, a racially mixed nation, living in peace and harmony. An example to the world. A challenge to all of us to unite under one flag for a single purpose, the progress and prosperity of Jamaica.